Saturday night, of course, was Universal Metal Works Autograph Night at Oswego Speedway, giving several of the fans, both young and old, a chance to come down and meet with the many drivers here at the Speedway. Always a very popular get-together, giving everyone a chance to put a face to a name for the heroes that run here each and every Saturday night at Oswego Speedway. The next autograph session will be Saturday, August 4th, as a part of Mr. Supermodified. Coming down to the green flag for the Universal Metal Works Pathfinder Bank SBS Series feature event on Saturday night was A.J. Burnus and David LaTulip leading the field to green and it was LaTulip from the outside of row number one and car number 17 pulling out to the early race lead as Brian Osetic and Jack Patrick do battle down the back straightaway. Osetic finally getting the double zero running but unfortunately his day went in on lap number three. A flat right front tire would send Osetic into the outside wall in corner number four ending his day. Brad Haynes and Dennis Rupert were also involved in a separate incident on the same lap further back into corner number three. When the green lights came back on, it was the green and white car of Rob Poland in the deuce, working his way through the field as he looked to be the first driver to win repeat feature events at Oswego Speedway this season in the SBS division, and he looked very good doing so, working his way under Patrick in the nine, then pulling to the outside of Burnus in the 24 to corner number one. Poland moves into the runner-up spot, and he would immediately draw a bead on the Latulip number 17, coming out of corner number four and down the front straightaway. Laps later, Poland dives to the inside, going into corner number one, washes up the track, makes a little bit of contact, but Rubin is racing. Poland pulls out to the lead out of corner number two. Burnus moves up into the second spot. Jack Patrick would move into position number three. LaTulip would continue fading through the field and eventually would spin in corner number four, ending his day in the 17. Later on, lap 20, Marcus Stelia, your winner from one week ago, he was running up into the top five, but ran into issues in the corner number one. He as well would pull to the high side of the speedway and drop out of this one in the 69. Not much later, J.J. Andrews as well in car number 93 would also call it a day with a broken rear end. Later on, it never takes too long for Mike Bond to work his way through the field. He pulled into position number three, eventually got round A.J. Burnus for the runner-up spot. But in front of this one, it was Rob Poland in the two machine, becoming the first driver to win two Pathfinder Bank SBS Series features this season. Bond came home second ahead of Patrick, Burnus, and Mike Bruce in the top five. Craig Harris, Andrew Shartner, and Tim Barbeau would be your top eight as Robbie Poland pulls down into Chris Nelson Insurance Victory Lane here at Oswego Speedway. He would climb out of the roll cage, the first driver to do it twice, and talk to Keith Zare. Well, it's hard to, hard to expect anything really. The cars, this car has been really good. And uh, yeah, I think we'll get another one before we're done. It's tough out there. There's a lot of, lot of guys out there running real tough. And you got lucky to get up the second. And I need a caution. I overheated my tires. I get my a couple of them guys. So I would have had a caution. I'm cooled down. Then maybe gave a run for it. Yeah, it was a little hairy on the outside there. I tried to go outside a couple of times, but the car wasn't sticking. And I think uh, AJ was getting a little loose there towards the end. He started slowing down a bit, and uh, I decided to jump up there and give it a shot, and the car stuck. Mike Bond now takes the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series point lead over Pullen. Harris, Shartner, and Barbeau in the top five. JJ Andrews now sits in position number six. Oswego Speedway, home of the super modified, known as the Steel Palace. Don't miss open wheel racing superstars, Joe Ghost, Randy Ritzkis, and Otto Sinderlin. As they wheel the meanest machines on the planet around the only track you can see. Oswego Speedway, Saturday, June 30th at 6.30. It's Davis Brothers meets Grand Prix. For more information, visit OswegoSpeedway.com. Watch the two wide racing action of the SBS series. Plus, don't miss a gigantic fireworks display. Saturday, June 30th, Oswego Speedway. Kids 16 and under free. Eight adults. During Universal Metal Works heat racing action on Saturday night in the Super Modified division, Brandon Bellinger and Joe Gosick doing battle out of corner number two. They make contact and Gosick hits the outside turn two wall with tremendous force, flipping the double zero over. He would climb out of the roll cage a-okay, but once again, the Oswego Speedway safety crew forced to make a quick exit 
to corner number two for the second week in a row you can see the Gosik machine actually had its front wheels off the ground temporarily making it very difficult to slow these machines down lots of damage to the Berks home center double zero it's going to be a long road to hoe for the defending super modified champion here in 2012. Later on, though, the Novella Super Modified 50 lap feature event ready to take the green, and it's Michael Muldoon and Stephen Joy of the Third bringing the field down to the Cam's New York Pizzeria green flag with Muldoon jumping out into the early race lead in the 50M, but there's trouble behind him. 11 cars get stacked up going into corner number three, including the 52 of Dave Danzer that hits the wall hard in the third turn. He was your winner from just one week ago. Another angle here from corner number three shows the 22 of Lavery spinning and everybody else collecting in behind. Ritzkis made contact with the 22, but not before he had help from the 60 of Sobis and the 20 of Payne. Everybody just stacking up into corner number three. Nowhere to go. Keith Gilliam in the 87 was involved. Uh, something happened up front. Um, I saw some cars uh, as I was coming into the turn. I saw some cars sideways and uh, kind of jingled up. Got out of the throttle, everybody wrecked up high. I stayed down low, and I might have been Devendorf got hit and spun and came down in front of me, and then I, uh, once I hit him, I don't know what happened. Last week's feature winner, Dave Danzer, had a GoPro in-car camera on his number 52 machine. We're told he's had the camera for two years, had never put it on until tonight. Well, we certainly got a pretty spectacular look. I don't know if you'll see the GoPro on the 52 machine next week here at the Speedway. With a complete restart in order, again it was Muldoon and Joya starting up there from row number one and once again it was the 50m of muldoon pulling into the race lead but the car on the move the strong racing machine the number 99 of the hustler mike barnes who has been one of the fastest cars at the speedway each and every week but just hasn't been able to catch a break he pulls to the inside of both tim snyder and steven joya in one fell swoop to move into the runner-up spot and begin to chase down muldoon after a caution flag for a stop, Bob Bond in corner number four. Barnes would find the bite on the low side on the restart, using his experience to slip underneath Muldoon into the race lead out of corner number two. With the front five cars checking away further back, it was Otto Sitterly and Pat Lavery moving their way through the field until the 01 of Danny Connors loses the handle down into corner number one. In the 01, Connors would rebound for a 10th place finish. After the restart, Dave Gruel, who was involved in that scary fire in corner number two just one week ago, did a yeoman's job of getting that car put back together and back here at the Speedway, making a nice outside pass of Brian Sobis to work his way further into the top five positions. You can see out in front, it's all Mike Barnes running away with a full straightaway advantage as Sitterly and Lavery continue their march through the field. Sitterly pulling to the inside of Sobis, then looks to the outside of Dave Gruel. They touch in corner number three, Sitterly with hard contact. Into the outside, turn three, retaining wall. That would end his night. Sitterly with a 14th place finish overall in the seven machine. With Barnes and Muldoon checking away from the field, once again we see Lavery doing his late race restart magic in the 22. Pulls to the outside of the 60 of Brian Sobis and then would set his sights on his teammate, Dave Gruel in the 50. Lavery again able to find the bite on the high side in corner number three, makes it stick out of the fourth turn. But Gruel would make him battle every inch of the way in the 50, working back up to the low side out of corner number two as they would go side by side down the back straightaway. Eventually, though, the 22 was able to make the move on the 50 to move to position number four. Lavery from there would quickly reel in. The zero of Timmy Snyder looking to move to a podium position, but it was too little, too late for Lavery. As out in front, it was all Mike Barnes and Michael Muldoon. Barnes in the strong racing car number 99 pulls out and across the line for his fourth career. Novella's super modified feature win. He would take the checkers over Muldoon, Lavery, Snyder, and Dave Gruel in the top five. Brian Sobis, Stephen Joya, and Joey Payne would be the top eight on Universal Metalworks night at the races as the strong racing crew very happy to pick up yet another feature win 
onto their resume as Barnes does the Polish victory lap behind the number 99 as he moves his way down into Chris Nelson Insurance victory lane here at Oswego Speedway, picking up his first win with Strong Racing. As we said, his fourth career win. He had three previous main event wins here at the Speedway, driving the Double Deuce Racing car number 22. Uh, actually, believe it or not, it was going away at the end. I was getting a little nervous. Uh, I think I was chewing up the right rear. Actually, some cautions helped me out because it cooled the right rear off a little bit. I had pretty good grip for a few laps after that. But I'll tell you what, first thing, uh, this is, uh, we, had, we had some people leave us this last week, and a real good friend of mine, about six months ago, my buddy Ray Gregory. And this one's for you, Raymond. Mary Ann and Jay Seymour. The, it is so tough, you know, to, to win here now. I mean, the Swiggo Speedway's back. I mean, you get a top five, a top ten here. It's earned. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, Michael Muldoon coming up. I mean, running great. I mean, there's another young guy. I mean, how tough is he going to be in a couple of years? And all the veterans. I mean, everybody's so fast, so competitive. Uh, it was great to get the monkey off my shoulder. Um, we've been waiting just to finish a race, but to finish second, that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, the 99 was phenomenal. There was, I had nothing for him, and I, I couldn't tell there wasn't anyone behind me, but the car felt good, and I... I didn't think anyone could get under me, so figured I had second locked up as long as, but I couldn't get the win. There's a lot of good cars out here, and that's a long ways to come from all the way in the back, so very happy with being up here to third. No, I didn't like it out there at all, but that's the only place you can go. Uh, it's a little slippery you get out there, kind of wash out to the wall a little bit, but uh, somehow we made it work. Otto Sitterly still leads the Novella Super Modified Series standings, but Pat Lavery managed to cut off 21 points. He is now just 20 markers behind Sitterly for the Super Modified Championship here at the Speedway. Ready for a night out on the town? Tonight, try something different. Lighthouse Lanes in Oswego, a family-friendly recreational facility. You won't miss a minute of the action. You can enjoy wings, burgers, pizza, and more right at your laneside table. Stop by for an evening of cosmic bowling. Catch all of your favorite games on our big screen TV. Plan your next party. We have room for up to 150 people. It's family-friendly fun for all ages. Lighthouse Lanes in Oswego, Route 104, next to the Speedway. Next Saturday night here at the Speedway, it's the always popular Grand Prix night brought to you by Davis Brothers Incorporated with extra distance races on the line for both divisions. The Novella Super Modified Series will be on tap for 75 laps while the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series will run 35. Fireworks also on the card, so make sure to come out to the Steel Palace next Saturday night as the fireworks will be on the track and literally in the sky. Don't forget, two weeks from now, we're going to have the Burt's Do It Best Home Center CNY Central King of Wings Terminal Velocity Showdown featuring the Isma Super Modifieds and the MustSeeRacing.com Extreme Sprint Car Series. One night only. Witness history and speeds never before attained. Isma Super Modified Extreme Sprint Car. Oswego Speedway. Sparks will fly. Fear is cast aside. Records will fall. The King of Wings Terminal Velocity Showdown. Get your tickets now. Witness the world's fastest short track challenge. For more information, visit OswegoSpeedway.com. The Terminal Velocity Showdown at Oswego Speedway. One night only. Saturday, July 7th. 